Good morning, YCF, family and friends. It's good to be in the house again to glorify the Lord. So this morning, what we're going to do, we're going to sing about God being exalted. So wherever you may be, wherever you're seated, join with us as we sing He is Exalted. Thank you. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Exalted, the King is exalted on high, and I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord forever. Word. 
worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Enter me. Oh, enter me. Bow down and worship Him. Worship.
Greetings in Jesus' name, uh, loved ones. My name is Liam Madden. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a very short testimony on um, what has really blessed me and encouraged me during this time of, of attending these services online with YCF. Um, I know that the stop of church gatherings caused a lot of concerns um, with a lot of people. It did in myself as well. One of the concerns I was having was you know, you know, how am I going to receive um, from the Lord and how are we going to be able to fellowship during this time? And um, it did raise some concerns. Um, but thankfully, it's been such a blessing and encouragement to attend these services online uh, every Sunday and just receive from the Lord. I just wanted to share three points with you today, just three points um, from a message to Thomas that was uh, broadcasted on Easter Sunday. And um, these three points really did encourage me, really, you know, encouraged me to remember who I am in Christ and, you know, what God says about me and what God says about us. Um, the first point was when we were, when, when Bishop Noel was talking about the resurrection of Jesus, and he mentioned that if the resurrection of Jesus only had relevance 2,000 years ago, that we would miss the opportunity for life application. That really resonated with me. That really encouraged me to remember the word of God. That says in Romans 8 verse 11, um, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Um, this was a great encouragement to me and you know, I just want to encourage you all as well that the things of God that are that have been dead in your lives God can resurrect in the name of Jesus the same power that lives in you is the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead and we can all be greatly encouraged by that message the second point I wanted to go on to was um, when Bishop Noel was talking about um, when Jesus was praying all night in Luke uh, chapter 6, verse 13. And um, the Word of God says Jesus was, was praying all night, I'm paraphrasing, and he went and called his disciples. Thomas was among his disciples. And this encouraged me during this time to remember that God has not called us by mistake. God has not called us without purpose in mind and without a future in mind. And this really encouraged me during this time as well to, to not forget that God has purpose for my life and God has called me with my future in mind. Um, during this time where we are with loved ones at home and we're una unable to socialize as, as much as we were to be able to before, um, it's important that we do remember what God says about us you know, and to remember that he has called us according to his purpose. The third message I would uh, like to share, or the third point I would like to share, is about the courage of Thomas. And in Luke chapter 11, Jesus wanted to go into Judea, which was considered a dangerous region at this time. And Thomas spoke up. Thomas had the courage to speak up. Um, it was that courage to follow the Lord into a region 
that was considered to be dangerous. You know, during this time while we are under pressure, I just want to encourage everyone and myself that our strength doesn't fail in the Lord. And the Word of God says that those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So I just want to encourage you today uh, to continue to bless each other. Um, it would be a great blessing if you can share these services with friends and families. Send a message, um, invite somebody to receive from the Lord. Uh, it would be a great encouragement to them. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now as we come into your presence, we give you the glory and we give you the honor. Right now, Father, I pray that you'll bless every ear and every person that's in this song right now. Presence ever be. Let your presence ever be. Sing that again. Let your presence. 
Praise your name. We adore you and we love you because you alone are worthy. I'm right now, Father, in this present climate, Lord God. You are more worthy than ever. So we give you praise, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we worship you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. family, friends, it's such a joy and a privilege to be with you again, to be able to communicate the love of God and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've been so encouraged by the feedback and we know that we've made some real friends and um, even internationally. I want to continue um, this message that at first I thought would only be one week. Uh, this is now our third week looking at the voice that feeds you. So I just want to pray uh, before we get into God's word today. It's going to be a lot of scriptures today, slightly different to the, the previous two uh, parts of this message. But I just want to encourage you to remain sensitive to the Holy Spirit so that he can speak to you. You don't need to hear from me. We need to hear from him. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Lord, we desire to have your voice heard and resonating in our spirit night and day. Lord, we pray that as a result of us hearing your voice, that there will be seismic changes, transformations in our lives. For Lord, we know that when you send your word, it never ever returns void. It accomplish the, the assignment you gave it. And I thank you that today there is an assignment for every single word that you will speak to us. There is an assignment for every single word that comes out of your mouth concerning our family, our future, our jobs, our careers, our ministries. I thank you that your word will never return empty. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to do the work that 
only you can do. And everybody said, amen. Okay, loved ones, turn again to Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to read from verses 3 to 4. Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is interesting because I think that as we've looked into this text, we've realized how much of a challenge it is to ensure that the voice of the Lord is the dominant voice. As I said the first week, we're living in a time of voices. And through relationship, we need to be able to discern with certainty the voice of the Lord. When Jesus walked as a man on this earth, he said to his own disciples in St. John 6, 63, and I will use the NLT, it says, it is the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human efforts accomplishes nothing, and the very words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. The the key, I I just want to establish this before we go any further. The key for us to understand is that when God speaks to you, if you were to call God's language a, a name, you know, like someone who speaks German or French, God's language is spiritual. It's spiritual. And therefore, you need to have an understanding of his spiritual language. And the way that you become familiar with his spiritual language is by being spiritually born again. Not just someone who's religious, but someone who has been transformed from the inside out. So there are three things that I want us to look at uh, this morning. And I really sense a very strong anointing, and I don't know if we'll get to the end, but I want you just to flow with me. Um, This is about the Lord speaking. You don't need to hear from me, but we must hear from the Lord. So I want us to know what I call the talk to listening ratio with God. Do you spend more time talking to him rather than listening? I want us to consider direction and why direction at times can be above perfection okay why is it that direction at times can be more important than perfection and number three what can we learn from dead ends okay what can we learn from dead ends so let's deal with our listening how much time do you take to listen just generally. And maybe you are not the best qualified person to answer that. So if you're sitting next to someone who knows you really well, just ask them right now, do I listen? (laughs) And do I listen well? Because what happens is that the way in which you can accelerate learning is through listening. He said it again, the way that you can accelerate learning, the, the, the quickest way in some respects for God to teach you is for you to have a listening heart. James 1 verse 19 tells us that, you know, beloved, be, be, be swift to listen, be, be quick to listen, but be slow to speak. You know, don't, don't be quick to, to, to speak, but be quick to listen. Make sure that's your posture because Proverbs 1 verse 5 says, a wise man will hear and increase in learning. So someone who listens to God is deemed as being wise. Someone who's wise. And as a result of that wisdom, we posture ourselves to increase in learning to increase in learning. 
so with that in mind, I want to ask you a question. As I said, there's going to be a lot of scriptures this morning. What is the first and last voice that feeds your spirit every day? What's the first voice? And what's the last voice? Because this will begin to give you a true representation of the voice that is feeding you. Now, everyone needs to have their own kind of routine, but what is the voice? What's the first voice that feeds you? Is it going online on your phone to read someone's status? Is it, you know, checking the football scores before you go to bed? And please, these are not sinful things. I'm asking you to reflect and do a self-inventory about what is the dominant voice that is feeding your spirit. Because what happens, your life will ultimately reflect the voices you listen to. Psalms 1 verse 2 tells us about the, the man who is blessed, and it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. That word meditate in Hebrew suggests a rehearsing, a, 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 a muttering. So he's rehearsing over and over again the word of God. Night and day, Psalms 81 verse 13. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. That's the cry of God's heart. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Where would the world be if it listened to God? Where would our nation be if it listened to God? Where would some of the people that we love who find themselves in serious problematic situations, where would they be if they listened to the voice of the Lord. I love what Isaiah says in Isaiah 50 verse 4. He says, he awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The New LT version says, morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. So what happens is that when you allow the voice of the Lord to be the dominant voice, what happens is that he awakens you to understand his will. Every time you wake up, there is a sense where God reveals to you his will for today. So what happens is that if we don't change our talk to listening ratio, we are going to miss out on the counsel of God. God counsels us after his own will. So it's imperative that you begin to examine how do your mornings start and how do your days end? How do your mornings start? How do your days end? Because one of the wonderful things about the voice of the Lord being the dominant voice, being the voice that feeds you, is that he's able to direct us. When God speaks to you, he speaks with a sense of direction. Have you ever seen, um, just before... Um, an orchestra is ready to perform. There's just noise. Everyone's tuning and practicing. Nothing is synchronized. But when the director comes, he brings everything together. And that which was before seemed to be chaotic now has a sense of dignity now has a, a sense of harmony because it's the director, the conductor that brings everyone together. And when we hear 
the voice of the Lord. And when that voice becomes the dominant voice, he brings the strands of your life that didn't make sense before. He makes sense of them and he brings them together. As I've said before, when God speaks to us, he speaks with our future in mind. Sometimes we struggle to consider whether it's God speaking to us because he's speaking about a season that we haven't come into yet. But just because we haven't come into it yet doesn't mean that what we're hearing is not accurate. Godly direction has a point of origin and a point of destination. Can you say that with me? Godly direction has a point of origin and a point of destination. Let's say it again. Godly direction has a point of origin and a point of destination. There is somewhere God wants you to go. There is something he wants you to do. There's a realm, there's a season ahead. Hallelujah. I just need to pause there. There is a season ahead for you. And the way that you are going to be ready for the season is for you to allow the words that God is speaking in the now. You've got to allow God to speak now so that you are prepared for the season that is ahead. But if you miss the now word, you won't be ready for tomorrow. So God speaks to you with the future in mind. And one of God's principal ways of giving direction to you. You might say, well, how can I hear God every day? Read scripture. Read and read and read and study and study scripture. The word scripture comes from the Greek word graphe, which means writings. It's where those of us who have done maths, we get the English word graph from. In other words, graphs make sense of the data we receive. So what happens is that when we read scripture, it begins to make sense of the data, the things that we've received in our lives. And without scripture, we struggle to make sense of what's happening around us. I want to say to you that scripture is our instruction manual. It's God's principal way of speaking to you making sense of all the data. You know, I've been sharing to people that even though we are in challenging times, don't try to interpret the times just based on looking at the times. Interpret the times by looking at Scripture because Scripture will provide an accurate interpretation of the times that we're living in. We need God to speak to us. It must be the dominant voice that wakes you up in the morning, puts you to bed, starts you on your way, inspires you to do the things that you need to do. We must hear the voice of the Lord. Can you say that with me? We must hear the voice of the Lord. One more time. We must hear the voice of the Lord. But well, we've got to read scripture. Do you know, I found some statistics that was humorous, but had a serious point to it. A, a company, a tech company, I won't mention their name, a large tech company in America carried out a survey regarding their technical support team. And they realized that 64% of men and 24% of women who rang up for technical support saying that something wasn't working had never ever read the manual, had never ever read the instruction booklet. And what they found is that the majority of their issues could have been resolved if they had just read the manual. <laughs> if you had just read scripture, if you had just allowed God to speak through scripture to you, then what you are calling faulty would have been rectified. So there has to be a sense 
where we commit ourselves to receiving his graphe, his, his scriptures, so that we can make sense of our world. And as we make sense of our world, God is able to provide direction. How many of you value direction? How many of you value the fact that when God spoke to you, he directed you, he made the path clear? You see, sometimes we doubt the direction of God because of our lack of perfection. Let me unpack this. A lack of perfection doesn't suggest a lack of direction. What I mean by that is that you can be on the right path, but you're struggling on that path. You're not getting everything right. But in this instance, direction is superior to perfection. It is better to be going in the right way. You see, great people make mistakes on the right path. It's better to be on the right path and make mistakes on the right path than for you to be on the wrong path and getting everything right. You might perfect your actions but still be heading for destruction. So there is a sense that a lack of perfection doesn't mean a lack of direction. I don't want you to doubt the voice of God that told you to start that business or told you to immigrate or told you to, to, to start that relationship and just because there's problems. No, problems are not an indication of whether God's in it or not. What you need to sense is that the destination is of God. You may not be perfect, but I'm on the right destination. Things may not be going smooth, but we are on the right direction. We are on the right destination. As long as the coordinates are of God, be strong and of a good courage. Just turn to someone next to you right now and say, be strong and of a good courage. You're on the right path. It's in the right direction. So for us, and I just really want to pause here. The Lord just brought this back to me. Don't change direction because of the storm. Don't change direction because of the storm. You serve a God who knows how to speak, hallelujah, to the storm. Don't change direction. Psalms 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and I will teach you. My voice will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. Not the way that you could go. There's a way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. There's a way that you could go. But every time you posture yourself to hear the voice of the Lord, he will say to you, this is the way I want you to go. Don't look at others. Oh, oh my God. Don't look at others. There's a way that I've carved out for you that has your footprints, that matches your DNA. And I know there are times it may seem lonely, the path that I've earmarked for you, but you have to realize that I've called you to be a pioneer. And sometimes a pioneer can has to trust God and him alone because there are no footsteps to follow. But he says, I will instruct you and I'll teach you, and I'll lead you in the way that you should go. You should go. Just say that with me. There's a way that I should go. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, there's a way that I should go. Not could go, but should go. 
And as you speak to me, I'm going to find the way that I should go. Hallelujah. I know that you may be saying to yourself, well, Bishop, I've tried. I thought I heard God accurately. And all I've ended up with is a dead end. What's a dead end? You know, it's an end of road or passage from which no exit is possible unless you're willing to change direction. Have you reached a dead end? Have you been listening to a voice that has brought you to a dead end because that's not something the voice of the Lord would do. Have you realized that the only possible exit is if you turn around? If you change direction? And you've got to begin to question the voice that brought you here. You've got to ask yourself, how did I get here? What was the voice that brought me to that point? What was the voice that caused me to put all my energy into thinking, yeah, this is the best way to live my life, this is the best way to run my family, this is the way I want to do things, and you find yourself in a dead end. But I want you to know, the Holy Spirit is saying to you today, if you will allow my voice to feed you, I will turn morning into dancing. I will turn your life around. It might be a dead end, but you are not dead. I've kept you alive because I'm a God of a second chance. Hallelujah. There's a way out. I want to close by talking about someone that we know very well in the New Testament who reached a dead end. A man called Saul. You see, it's interesting that he was very religious. But man-conscious religion will always lead to a dead end. And he thought that everything that he was hearing and everything that he was doing was of God. It's interesting that we can spend a whole life and fill out our whole resume and say, these are all the things that I did for God. But I will always ask the question, you may have done it for him, but did you do it with him? And Saul realized that he had spent so many years persecuting the very church that God was speaking through. And Acts chapter 9, verse 4 to 5 tells us that he had a divine encounter and that's my prayer today that you will experience a divine encounter right where you are right now wherever you're watching this message that you will sense the presence of the living God like never before because he wants to turn things around and the Bible tells us that Saul fell to the ground and he heard a voice. He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Can you imagine? He heard the Lord saying, why are you persecuting me? He says, who are you, Lord? Then he said, I am. I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. It's hard for you to kick against what is my will. It's hard for you. It's hard for you when you're not listening to my voice. It's hard for you because you're trying so hard, but you're not seeing the fruit. It's hard for you, Saul, because you think that you are right, but your ways are not right. The ways will end in death. But right now, Jesus can turn your life around. Who is the voice that 
Jesus said to Saul, I am Jesus. Right now, I want you just to bow your heads with me as I pray. A very simple prayer. Lord, let your voice provide the word each day to feed me. Say it one more time. Lord, Lord, let your voice provide the word each day to feed me. In Jesus' name. I pray that these series of messages have blessed you and transformed you. There is a voice that wants to feed you and it is the voice of the living God. Remember, man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God bless you. I love you. Thank you for your time this morning. And if we can serve you further, please don't hesitate to contact us. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope that the service has been a blessing to you. And if you have made a decision to commit your life to the Lord this morning, please do get in touch with us. We'd love to encourage you and assist you on your walk with the Lord. If you can, Please get in touch with us via the details that are to come up on the next page. Grace and blessings.